Okay, folks, this time we have Huck versus Apocalypse, aka Smile versus Queenie. And uh, I should inform you might, you might not have time to fix Hotkey's secret. So I'm going to drop these guys right into the heat of battle this time. There's not going to be a whole lot of uh, setting up like we've seen in the past, so I'm going to fast forward to 7 minutes, see you guys in a second. Okay, here we are at the 7 minute 40 second mark. We're going to have Queenie taking on the role of Huck and Smile taking on the role of Quantix Apocalypse. Guys, are you ready? Yeah, just play like you were for real. Good luck. Three, two, one. All right, now Queenie and Smile, they don't have time to really adjust their hotkeys too well, but let's see what's happened so far this game. Looks to be that Huck, aka Queenie, did get out some oracles. Uh, I'm guessing peppered the natural a little bit because these oracles have taken a bit of damage and gonna get here into the main, but unfortunately there is another missile turret to deter these guys and some marines. So you gotta get those oracles out alive. You don't want to waste those units. They're very good against marines. If uh, Queenie plans to hit here with Huck's units, Queenie can actually do a ton of damage if the oracles are on top of this, but there are two bunkers on the high ground for Smile. Both players right now have really got to take just about 15 seconds to assess what's going on, what their hotkeys are, what's available on the field. we got five gates for Hawk, a.k.a. Queenie, as she tries to push in to break this. As the force fields are thrown down to try and deny repairing these bunkers, the first bunker goes down very quickly, and these oracles are doing a ton of damage. Smile desperately trying to get in here, but another force field goes down. And Smile's bunker, a.k.a. Apocalypse's bunker, is going to barely stay alive. It will push this army back for the time being, but really, Queenie Huck. Let's check the resources lost at this point. Workers lost even. Eight SCVs picked off through that, but the resources lost barely even in the end. So, not too bad of a hold there from Smile, and not too bad of an, I guess, an engagement, a tango, if you will, coming out of Queenie. Now, what has Queenie been left with here from Huck? I mean... We take a look at this, the natural is up and running. Let's look at the worker count. It's 42 to 32. I mean, this is a couple less probes, but that's okay. You can chronos them out to make up that difference. But these Marines, they don't have combat shields. They've got stim pack on the way, plus one as well. So Smile's forces are quite scary. It's going to be very difficult for Queenie to break this ramp, but not impossible, I'd have to say. She already did handily, handily rather, take down that first bunker very quickly, but these sentries are just starving for energy and you really got to do that one two three four perfect force field flower to break down a bunker with no SCVs repairing it now the follow-up to this seems to be more zealots warped in no no continued stargate production interesting choice I feel like an addition of a void rate could be quite quite helpful if you're trying to tear down this bunker or even just go in from behind to take out that uh, missile turret well maybe smiles distracted at the front but we got the mothership here core or mothership core here now wow talk about dyslexia zealots are going to push forward the bunker was actually empty but now being loaded up and the Mothership Core is not actually able to do too much to really help with this. Time Warp will not be of an assistance unless Queenie decides to target down the SCVs. But no, the Bunker still stands. Smile going to hold this. And again, the Worker Count's not too bad of a difference. Because Terran, you got to remember, they're always going to have that Mule Advantage. Queenie's got her geysers not saturated at the natural, though. And that could be problematic. It's a big gas investment to push against a Terran player. And we do have the Robo Bay on the way. But has she noticed the lack of saturation? There we go. She does. And she starts putting into this. Now, this is, uh, since now we're out of the action here, and we got a t second or two to talk, Queenie taking her third. This is, uh, my insanity players once again coming back for this awesome take command feature. This best of three within a one game. And, uh, both players can expand behind this. Kind of, this is turning into be somewhat of a standard game. And, of course, I will always link footage of the original game so you guys can see just how different the comparisons between the real game and what, uh, Queenie and Smile chose to do versus Apocalypse and Hawk. Now this one Zal is going to try and poke away the command center, but really it's doing so in vain. Not a lot of damage can get pulled off here. Queenie taking her third while this is going on. I mean, this is shaping up to be pretty slow, but pretty alright. Both players kind of in... I wouldn't necessarily call either particularly far ahead. Queenie's got the tech. Or, well, not tech, rather, but the infrastructure for tech. we got the Robo Bay on the way, so Colossus will be out sooner than later. We've got no Blinker's Charge going, unfortunately, but that gas needs to be saved for the Colossus and the extended Thermal Land, so understandably so. But Blink Stalkers, always good. It's never bad to have Blink Stalkers. But this Marine Force from Smile is pushing, and he's got quite a few Marines with this. they got Stim, they got Combat Shields now. More importantly, they have 1-1, and Queenie is sitting... Oh, actually, also on 1-1, so my mistake, 2-2 two, two just starting. I thought... The upgrades were only just beginning here, but Mothership Core with the Photon Overcharge should have no problem holding this. 
Now, Apocalypse, sorry, uh, Smile, <laughs> I gotta stop doing that, is gonna push in here, the SCV sacrifice to see that the Photon Overcharge was thrown down, and he's just gonna wait this out, or maybe in a better case scenario, lift off and go to the main, and if that's gonna be the case, Queenie finds herself with a very immobile army without Blink. Posturing around here is Smile, I mean, he really wants to get in here and do something, but he knows he has to wait out that Photon Overcharge, will instead see, like, is there a third base for me to pick off, and happily so, he'll find, yes, there's a naked Nexus here. And Queenie could try and come in to save this, but really, actually with the Colossus on the field, maybe going to stand a pretty okay chance. But there's still a lot of Marines here, but not a lot of Marauders. So the Colossus itself is not actually in the biggest threat of danger, I guess you could say. But, alright, Marines at the top of the ramp here. I mean, in a worst case scenario, Smile just lifts up and he leaves. So it's not that precarious of a situation. There's no blink to chase the medevacs once they lift up. And, uh, I mean, he just snipes the Nexus, and actually he drops in the main while this is going on. Did not catch that going on. A couple probes already being focused down. Same with the Forge. A great reaction here out of Queenie, though, with the Photon Overcharge, but it's not going to be enough to save that plus two armor. Weapon's still on the way. Can Smile snipe the weapons as well, though? Oh, he might, because the big engagement at the front of the ramp. The Colossus falls immediately. Nice distraction tactics coming out of Smile. And Zealots are going to shred and shred and shred and do what they can, but the Medivac's also being targeted down, but there's just so many Marines behind this, and Queenie, with the drop in the main, does finally clean it up, but the Natural is nothing close to safe. That, Without that charge, without that blink, it's going to be really impossible, I feel, to hold this off. Going to be chased up this ramp. No more Photon Overcharge, unfortunately. Just shy of energy. It's going to get there, but not for another about 20 seconds or so. Smile is going to lose Marines under this, but the Medivacs are starting to dry up with energy. So this, this sort of OP heal mechanic is going to wear out. But nice time warp will allow the Zealots to actually catch these Marines and clean this up. Now how many workers were killed there? Actually not nearly as many as I thought. I guess there just was low saturation in the main to begin with. 12 workers in total. Not a small amount, but not a huge game ending amount either. But the big thing that was game ending, or maybe not game ending, but really hurt Queenie was losing that third base. A smile is going to sit here idly with these medevacs, almost loses the one with two marines in it. And Queenie has got to get that probe production up ASAP. There's a lot of energy for Chrono Boost available. I'm not sure what she's saving it for. 100 on this Nexus, use the Chronos woman. But all right, Sentry's coming out as well, but Smile might just have too big of a force. And the thing is, even if even if Queenie holds this force off, the macro from Smile is going to be exactly the way he needs it, as he's got that third base, a fourth base now on the way as well. And we might be seeing the end of this. GG is called, and Smile going to take game one. All right, we're heading into game two here. Again, with EG's Huck versus Quantic Apocalypse being played by the parts of, or the roles rather, being played by Queenie for My Insanity and Smile for My Insanity. Now, uh, no peeking, guys. You know the rules. We're going to fast forward here to the 10 minute mark this time. So, in game one, we saw Queenie was unable to bust the natural and unfortunately could not take down those bunkers. But before I do the movie magic, I want to point out this game will be going very differently from the time at which I will be resuming the replay. All right, movie magic all the way over. Now, the big thing you'll notice is the all-in worked this time. Queenie, unfortunately, was not able to execute what Huck could, but we'll see if she can follow up from this. And a smile, of course, taking an apocalypse once again. Guys, three, two, one. All right, let's assess the situation we're in. We saw how this game opened up. Smile playing Apocalypse, being kind of thrown into a really unfortunate situation that Natural been denied at this point, and it was lifted off to safety, however, so not the biggest deal in the world. How many workers killed? 24 SCVs picked off at this point. I must say, Queenie's doing quite well for herself. A nice force field on the ramp, too. Oh my goodness, gonna catch so many of these zealots and marauders outside. More reinforcements coming from that pylon. And oh no, Smile looks like he wanted to pull to try and deal with this. He needs to try and reclaim his natural, that's what he wants to do, going to chase Queenie off for the time being. SCVs do need to go back to work though, they are kind of idly sitting here doing nothing productive. And this is looking a lot better for Queenie this time than it was last game. Let's take a look at the income counts right now, both players on actually not too different of worker counts. Of course there's three CCs, so that definitely helps make up that difference, but Smile trying to reestablish some bunkers, Queenie just recovering out of this. Now she did say between games, guys, this is a player, she likes playing her macro games, she does not like going for that cheese, that all in, and quite frankly said she's not comfortable doing all in so maybe pulling back from this getting the third base up establishing a more macro oriented game might just be her cup of tea to win this game versus apocalypse aka smile your smile is going to push across the field with a small contingency of units and i can't blame him for doing so because he just took such heavy losses at home he wants to make sure there is no third base he doesn't know if at the point when he resumed game one Queenie put up that Nexus, or if it was Hawk, but oh no, these Marines are going to get slaughtered. Time Warp going out as well, and there's no Medivacs to support this. There's no getting out of this. Smile losing so many of his forces here. 
And that's not looking good. Queenie actually getting a very nice victory there, but Smile at home, he's got the bunker up, but unfortunately, most of his units were thrown in that attempt to counterattack. And I think he was really counting on, you know, after seeing the all-in from game one, like, okay, there's got to be no follow-up to this. Like, okay, she pulled back with a handful of stalkers. I could take on a handful of stalkers with Marines and Marauders, but that's not the case. Queenie now inside the base with a lot of energy on their sentries. She's going to force field off this bunker. There's going to be no repairing it. And we actually have the ambition. I love that. So intelligent coming out of our Protoss player, knowing that there would probably be Widow Mines there. Now, SCVs are pulled to try and deal with this, but the force fields are very nice. Smile trying to repair this bunker, but... I don't know if he can. It's just a little too much here from Queenie this time. Huck's forces might just prevail. The bunker is still standing, though. Oh, but it finally goes down. But units, unfortunately, retreating into the time warp. And what a smile have on the field. But other... <laughs> He's got mules he can pull. Oh, a lot of mules going to soak some damage here. But that's about it because most of them are trapped actually behind the mineral lines inside the command center. That's not good. So many more SCVs going down. And right now, Smile is taking such heavy losses. 44, 45 workers and climbing. The middle of the ramp, actually Gigi's just going to be called, dancing his units. I think he realizes, like, look, I've lost too much at this point. I'm not in a good position. GG. Alright, we're getting into game three here. It's currently 1-1 in this best of three. And yes, I am a maniacal genius. I do try to pick the second game to be a little bit more favorable timing-wise. For the player that loses game one, I always want to see how this plays out differently. And smile. The rules of this basically are the loser gets to pick the final time. So I don't know when Smile will pick. 45 seconds, he says. All right, we'll see how this goes. Game over. Okay, you sure? <laughs> okay, good luck, guys. Quinn, you're going to play the role of our Bird Player Hawk, and Smile once again reprising his role of Apocalypse. It's like watching a play. But guys, here we go. Going to get into three, two, one. I really wish I had, like, the movie announcer smoking a cigarette for, like, 40 years of his life type voice to go with that. Because, I mean, it's so cool. I love the way Blizzard implemented that. Now, there are two things that I want to point out, guys. Neither of these players had access to the replay. They've never seen this played out in full. They, quite frankly, will have no idea how this game actually went originally unless they saw this, I guess, being streamed or something. So Queenie and Apocalypse choosing to make the third game. I like that they did this, by the way. Game one, game two, I kind of threw them into situations where there's already a lot of action going on and not a great way for either player to respond. Just trying to see how players control the units around this. And by choosing the 45 second mark in this game, Apocalypse basically saying, or sorry, not Apocalypse, but rather Smile basically saying, look, Queenie, I want to play you for real. I want to see how this game goes. And Smile is going to come out in the middle of the map and go for some haxes with some raxes. If we could call it as such. Now, this is kind of uh, him playing honorably. Now, I want to point out why he's doing this. I did say, like, look, guys, you got to play like you don't know what's going on regardless of what strategy you do. And at this point in the game, he hasn't done a scout. Now, he's got to be a manor guy and throwing his SCV in the top right. He knows Huck is in the lower left. There's no questions about that. But he's just playing this out as if he's going to be legit, which I think is a very honorable thing of him to do. Didn't have to because the point of this replay is it's not to like, it's not like you're on ladder trying to hide map hacks or anything. You know what's going on. Everyone knows you know what's going on. And you see how differently it gets played. Now, smile with two racks is this is pretty classic classic and tried and true and 11 11 racks works pretty nicely against protoss i mean the two racks pressure has been a big thing since uh, quite frankly wings of liberty even even before the beta i was gonna say beta for heart of the swarm but no wings of liberty i don't know why i forgot about that it's a dark time my friends now these raxes are <laughs> smile you clown he is gonna scout the top left too but that's okay because i think he knows when the marines pop out he's just gonna move to the lower left and we'll have to see if queenie can deal with this she did open gateway she's getting the cyber core out if she has a stalker out and can shut the bunker down then you know what she will hold this without a shadow of a doubt but unfortunately that's not gonna be the easiest thing to do because she doesn't know this is coming neither player knows this is basically a ladder match uh with smile playing like a clownish completely mannered jackass <laughs> if i can phrase it as such i do like smile he's a cool guy and both of these players very friendly uh, with base trade tv so i was very happy that they agreed to well i shouldn't say both these players queenie recently acquired by mind sanity but i've never had a bad encounter with any mind sanity player they've been some of the nicest guys i've got to interact with and smile gonna come in here with these marines soon i imagine and going nexus early this is gonna suck she's gonna need to cancel this and, oh, that vision. Smile does kind of give away the SCV scouting, but this is just kind of a regular scout time, so it's nothing too out of the ordinary. Bunker going to go down behind the mineral line, and Queenie has her mothership core in the main, not in the natural. She doesn't actually know this is coming. Smile even pulling SCVs with this, which is a little bit ironic because we did have Queenie say, like, look, I don't know how to do all-ins properly. I don't know how to execute them. I like my macro games. All that good jazz. Well, you know what? Oh, Smile, we can't. 
killed one of his SCVs. I don't know, a bit of a misclick there, but he is going to come in with an all-in. No questions about this. Now, he left some SCVs at home, but the question is... Is it going to be enough? Queenie now sees not only the bunker, but all the SCVs. She can still cancel this Nexus if she wants, and she absolutely should do so because she's no way she's going to hold off an all-in with SCVs being pulled as well. Now, Smile is a bit hesitant to engage. I think he wants the rest of his Marines to be with his force because a stalker can just kite all day. But no cancel going down on that Nexus, sadly. And the Robo Facility coming up. Oh my, I think she was expecting Widow Mines, but she's going to be greeted with Marines instead and really needs to just get two more gates on the field. Anything Warp Tech, Chrono the heck out of it, something. Smile now. <laughs> He's doing some very awkward posturing, I must say. I'm not sure what his goal is with this, but he is trying to avoid as much damage as possible. But the longer he waits, the more time he gives the Queenie. And oh, if she can get that warp deck up, if she gets some more on the field, poking in, poking out, he will try, probably just try and force her, force her to fight. But oh my god, I didn't actually consider it because I forgot the Mothership Core is really overpowered. Does get the photon overcharge off, and Smile. I think he was trying to do something a little bit cheeky that just didn't work out for him here. I mean, he's going for the bunker, he lands his marines inside, he can try and repair this, but the SCVs have pretty much been picked off at this point. They've done their job of soaking damage, but not their job of repairing anything. One single SCV hiding behind enemy lines. Can he repair this bunker and get this Nexus knocked down? Queenie with a couple stalkers is going to have something to say about it, but Smile... I like that he went for this very cheeky all-in, but I don't think it's going to pan out for him. Now, he's still muling behind this. He's building SCVs. He's going to try and recover, but, I mean, this is not a situation you really recover from. He can focus down these stalkers. He's not going to get this Nexus, though, but the Photon Overcharge does wear off. But the bunker's going to burn down, sadly. And with some proper micro, he might get these stalkers. He's got a chase, but there's a Mothership core at the top of the ramp waiting. <laughs> some nice center stuff going on, but is it nice enough is the big question. More Marines funneling across the field, but... That's pretty much it, guys. Queenie, I think, has holding this all in very nicely. The Mothership Core performing his job. And you know what? I said she should cancel. <laughs> I said she should cancel the Nexus, but I'm glad she didn't. Guys, that's going to be a Queenie take a 2-1 over Smile in this best of three within a one. Hey, yeah. hi. All right, guys. This is Rifkin. I'm here with the players that just finished playing with Apocalypse and Hawk. And we're just going to do a little bit of post-game recap to get their points of view on what happened there. Because, again, Take Command is a feature I don't think a lot of people have utilized. And it's definitely... Different to say the least. I think you guys could agree with that. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's really. I mean, you have to take time to you set your hotkeys and stuff. Also, you have no control whatsoever in the build order. So. Yeah, the build yeah. order. Well, that's part of this is like you get dropped right into the action. Like I'm sure you guys noticed in game one and game two, I picked two very precise moments where a lot of stuff was already going on. Queenie, game one did not go your way. What is uh? What are your thoughts on the way that worked? You mentioned something about all-ins between games. <laughs> yeah, like, I was not expecting, like, the thing is, I, I didn't even watch what Huck was doing, because I was just not watching anything, so I would be unprepared, like, completely. Uh, and when I saw, like, five gates in a Stargate, I was like, oh, shit, this is an all-in. I never all-in. <laughs> so I had no idea what to do. I was like, oh, shit, what did I do? Warping unit? Oh, shit, he has a turret. Oh, fuck. And then it was just... Downhill from there, like straight away when I saw it wasn't all in, I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, game two smile. That was very interesting. The, well, I mean, the big thing about that was the all in didn't work for Queenie, right? So, game two, I picked a point where the all in had already worked and she didn't have to worry about busting yeah. through the bunker and By all way, that craziness. I, I'm kind of curious how that worked because when I went in game one, Apohat scouted the whole base and he was really prepared for the all in. Maybe he lagged a bit and didn't pull this even time? I, I think the way it really worked was Huck was very much more relentless than Queenie was. I, I think a big part of that was her being unprepared for the all-in. As you said, like, what the fuck? A Stargate? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, and it was like, where's my units? Oh, shit. And then I usually have my Stargate, like, on four, but he has his Mothership Core, and I was like, where's Mothership Core? And shit, where's everything? I have no idea where anything is. Yeah. So, yeah, it kind of went not so yeah. well. Well, okay, a big question here. Well, hang on, just one sec, Smile. One, one big question here, I'm going to ask you each, uh, I'll ask Queenie first and you afterwards. Queenie, uh, how did it feel like, it, you know, you're taking on the role of a big name? This is Huck, this isn't some random guy on ladder. You know, it's, is there the nerd chill factor at all for you, or is it just pretty much like, look, I need to play as hard as I can? Like, for me, it's, it's such a big name to live up to, and I think I'm nowhere near close of being able to do that, so it's... It to me it was a lot of pressure. It was like, oh shit, this is gonna be a tight build order. This is this will need some like razor sharp timings and seeing it was an all in at that <laughs> it was just oh crap, this is <laughs> Well I'll tell you right now. Pressure. 
I'll tell you right now before I ask Smile this question here. Hawk actually lost that game originally. Uh, Apocalypse did win that. So you managed to pull a 2-1 out of a 0-1 that was the original game. So <laughs> that's got to feel... That's got to say something for you, at least. Now, Smile. Oh, well, that's not all too bad. <laughs> uh, well, Smile. Not to give any discredit to you, because you actually just finished playing one versus Wilco that went very much so in your favor. This was a little bit different, though, I feel, because I, I kind of put you in a little bit of a worse situation, especially after uh, game oh, two. No. <laughs> It was kind of worse when I got the wheel go and I paid it. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that that uh... killed me right away, man. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how I made it back. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, well, the game one went really nicely, but my question is, okay, you know, we had some pretty standard stuff happen. You guys got to see what was going on for the first 10 minutes-ish of the game. Your choice in game three was, look, I want to resume at 45 seconds in. And even when I was casting, I said, like, look, he probably wants to play macro. Uh, Queenie's going to be happy with this as well because she, she said she didn't like all inning. What was your thought process with 45 seconds? Because it went very different than I expected. Uh, I just wanted to get back at the, at the all in. I really wanted to get back at you. <laughs> to respond to the all with some cheese. Nice. I like that thought process. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, uh, I want to thank you both very much for participating in this. Do you have, if you want to, I guess we'll have Queenie go first, then smile afterwards. If you guys want to give any shout outs to your Twitters, Facebooks, or your team, whatever. Yeah, you can, like, if you want to support us, of course, follow My Insanity on Facebook and Twitter and all that, My Insanity EU. And also, my Twitter is SC2 Queenie and uh, Facebook SC2 Queenie as well. And on Twitch, it's actually Tetsui with a Z, so that's a bit different, but. Yeah, that's where you can find me. Okay, yeah, and I'm in uh, twitter.com slash myi smile, and in Facebook it's the same. I don't stream right now. I do have a stream channel. It's smile sc2. Uh, and support Bison, please. They're our main sponsor, and they made that house happen. So. Oh, yeah, you guys are living in that house now. I'm so jealous. But yeah, I will. I'm, I still have to go there. <laughs> Well, I will put all the descriptions in the, uh, I'll put all the information in the description down below. So if you guys uh, want to find them, you can just click those links pretty easily. But thanks again, both of you, for participating in this. It's different, it's new, and I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. I it was say, a lot of fun. <laughs> I just like being Apocalypse. I mean, he has beat me so many times in the Korean Lottery. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, take care and uh, have a good day. Good. Well, you too. Later.